So how's it going, DEF CON? Well, Nick and I appreciate coming out and hearing us talk. Um, this talk is called The Dirty South, Getting Justified with Technology. And uh, we'll be getting into that in just a minute here. But uh, really appreciate you coming out and always honored to, to speak here year after year again. Uh, just a quick introduction. Um, I'm the author of the Social Engineer Toolkit. I'm also uh, founder of Trusted Tech, and uh, it's a con consulting company. Um, and uh, co-author of the Metasploit, the Penetration Testers book. And um, also um, on, been presenting at Black Hat and DEF CON for, uh, for a number of years. And one of the co-founders of, of DerbyCon. So, um, you know, appreciate again coming up on stage and talking. All right, I am Nick. And uh, I can see that uh, the slide has been modified slightly. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> I also work for Trusted Sec, senior uh, uh, security consultant uh, with Dave. Uh, it's been awesome work with him. Uh, pen, pen tester, breaker of things, and uh, yes, I, I'm, I am wearing one right now. Um, <laughs> Derby, DerbyCon co-organizer, uh, head of security there. Um, I'm also a team member of social-engineer.org. Um, we're doing the SECTF down in Palma. Come down and visit at some point. Not now, because you're here. Uh, besides LV and uh, Delaware Slave, and um, I haven't wrote a book, but I've read some. So the intro to this talk is, um, you know, literally we, we, you know, if you look at kind of the evolution of security and where we're at today and why we're all here today, um, it's changed a lot. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through the evolution of security and where we're at today, and then from there we're just going to break some stuff and get a whole bunch of shells and do a bunch of other things, okay? Um, so we're going to do some three major demos. I have one big surprise for everybody here, which will be, you know, I'm always full of surprises. Um, so every time you come to my talk, you should expect something new. Um, but Nick and I are basically going to be going through um, the evolution of security and really where we're at today. And if you look at where we're at today, um, we continue to get new and new technology that's trying to strengthen and protect against hackers, right? So, you know, advanced persistent threat and all these other things that we hear out there to try to protect against, which is funny, right? Um, but this technology is, you know, becoming more and more complex and introducing more and more complexity and we're spending millions and millions of dollars on this type of stuff to try to protect us. And so today we're going to try to break it all. Sound good? Yeah. All right. So the way that we structured this was an AA meeting. Um, so first we need to realize that we all have a problem, right? So hi, I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Nick. And uh, welcome. We've been sober from technology, from buying technology for about two years now, but believe me, we get tempted every single time. I and mean, when we see that big blinky ass box that does some cool stuff that we have no idea what it does behind the scenes, we want to buy and spend a million dollars on it, trust me. So the way that we structured this is really trying to break you down into a reality that what this stuff really does, what it really stops us against, and then really start to build us up on really what we need to do to fix all this stuff. Because, you know, I see security either going this way or going this way. And you know what? Either way is going to be um, interesting and fun and exciting. Um, but we need to break you down first to realize where we're kind of at. And so um, if anybody's drinking a beer, please drink one right now for me. Because it's not really AA, it's for technology. So anyways. So just a warning, uh, we're going to try to walk through every single technology that we know of that most corporations implement. All right? But before we do that, we're going to get kind of into the history of security and why we're kind of in this, this vicious cycle of, of continually um, investing in different types of technology. And then from there, we'll start to actually go and attack them all. Sound good? All right. Awesome. Nick? All right. So basically, history of security in brief. So we have technology for about a century, so some type of technology. First the question is, why? Why do, we, why do we need security for this? Well, someone breaks something. It's like, oh, oh, okay. I see why we need security. And then they say, oh, here you go. This will fix it. And then it breaks again. Five minutes, five years, whatever. Breaks. Oh, wait, my bad. I can fix that. No problem. Rinse, repeat. It's an endless loop of, uh, an endless cycle, really. Nice. So I thought there was a really interesting story about this, uh, the inventor Marconi. In 1903, his so called secure wireless telegraph system was being tested. And it was touted as the most secure communication at the time. So a magician by the name of Neville uh, Mascalini decided, you know what, I'm going to prove him wrong. So what he did was he hijacked the presentation and sent his own little message through. And if you know Morse code, that's a, well, actually lulls in uh, Morse code. And he proves his point. Did, uh, did, 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 uh, sorry. Yeah, did, 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 so he proves his point that this is not a secure technology. So then we get to the age of an actual programmable computer. Now this is Zeus 3, where you can actually start to store some information on this. But what was really needed to secure that at that point? Well, 
you got to uh, – next slide. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you got to lock that crap up. I forgot I had this. Yeah, yeah. Can I have that? <laughs> yeah, here you go. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, you got to lock it up. Easy, easy enough, right? Lots of locks in the doors. But then – I don't know. I think I'm the one. Technology is hard. <laughs> so that, then, it, then it happened. Al Gore came along. He invented the internet. It's amazing. Can we get a round of applause for Al Gore, please? Yeah. Thank you. We are all here today because of him. <laughs> so, so now we have the tubes. The tu tubes are here. They're invented. This opens us up for a whole mess of different things. We've got anywhere from just your standard when, uh, virus malwares. We have uh, phishing. We have just normal malicious stuff that's out there. So, okay. Oh, you need some security. All right. Well, here's some security. This will protect you. Everything under the sun. Uh, AV. Uh, you know, everything to protect clients, uh, organizations. Then they start to realize, oh, we need some type of protection on the perimeter. Let's put up a firewall. Let's deny all these ports. Let's only allow what we need through. But something is not working with the state of technology. <laughs> so uh, Verizon, uh, Verizon, they did this, uh, this nine-year study. Now, over nine, a nine-year period, they found that there was around 2,500 data disclosures and 1.1 billion compromised records. So what happens is there's some confusion. We're putting all this money in all these things to protect ourselves, but 1.1 billion personal records are, are being breached, are being uh, taken. So why? So. You know, we continue to see this, and so a whole new industry was born, an industry where products can solve the, pro the problems of people. And so, you know, you look at these different products that are out there and the different things that are happening, there's technology that are specifically designed and, and made to social engineer us, basically, into trying to buy it to solve a specific problem. So the first one I'm going to pick on, uh, most specifically, is next generation firewalls, okay? So next generation firewalls um, are being touted as, you know, the way to prevent um, APTs, which I, if you go to any other white, uh, sites, it's all over there. I'm like, that's a giggle. Um, you look at all of the things that they're trying to do. They're trying to consolidate everything into one type of um, infrastructure, right, so that you have spam filtering and, you know, whitelisting and, you know, content filtering, all the stuff that's kind of built into this to try to protect the perimeter and move everything more towards the, per towards the perimeter. And so you're seeing this and, and companies are buying this so that they can try to stop against the latest and greatest attacks of today, all right? So the first demo we're going to do, and it's going to be two, new, new tool release that's going to be included in the social engineer toolkit, is we're calling it Silent But Deadly. Thank you, Valerie. She's here. Yeah, there she is. That was her idea. But I'm, I'm definitely not silent, but I'm definitely deadly when it comes to that stuff. So as my roommate can tell me. So what this is going to do, and I'm just going to show you a demonstration using the social engineer toolkit here, okay? And this is a Windows 8 machine, fully patched and like good stuff. We're not going to take advantage of an actual exploit yet. That's right. That's right. By the way, the chicken has no relevancy at all to this talk. We just wanted to put something random in here and then talk about let's pop a box. So that's all we need here, right? So I'm going to use the social engineer toolkit. I'm just going to show you an example of what this does. And um, I'll be releasing the code um, hopefully either today or tomorrow. And um, basically this is the new version, version 5.3. Now I haven't fully integrated the payload which is why it will be released either later today or tomorrow. Um, but here's what we're going to do first. We're going to clone a website. And again, we're going to coax somebody into clicking on something via social engineering. Now, <laughs> oh my God. What's that? No screen. What happened to the screen? <laughs> hey, I can see the screen. <laughs> can everybody see the screen now? All right, I'm not going to be able to do full screen in this for some reason, but that's cool. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with it. Hang on, I've got to minimize this one too. All right, does everybody see this? 
All right, everybody got that? Can you see my screen? The logo. Ah, it's not mirrored. That would be why. Jeez. So Dance. what we're going to discuss today is how to mirror displays on OS X. Look at the chicken, everyone. Look. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Over there, over there. All right, can you see that? Yeah. Whoa, whoa. All right, th thank you for coming. Bye. All right, so we're going to launch the Social Engineer Toolkit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clone a website really quick, okay? Now this is a new payload that I developed. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but a lot of the new next gen uh, firewalls are actually doing behavioral analysis on the network side, which means that they're protocol aware. So they can see protocols that are going back and forth, all that good stuff, and they can flag on things that aren't necessarily protocol specific, okay? So me, loving Metasploit and Meterpreter and everything else, I wanted to figure out a way that, um, to develop something that would never, ever, ever in any way, shape or form be detected again, okay? So that's usually what I go for. So. Grab my IP address here really quick to clone it. I'm actually going to change it real quick. Uh, all right. There we go. And I'm just going to clone Trusted Sex so I don't get in trouble anywhere. All right. That's not supposed to happen. We are connected. We're connected, don't you worry. Don't you worry. Sorry. Stop it. There we go, we're good. That's right. You even hits the best of us, man. All right, so we're going to clone trustsec.com. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my own payload, all right? And this is the code that's going to be released here. And the code itself um, is going to be public, but it's uh, basically Python and then it's wrapped in an executable, okay? All right, importing my own exe. You see it here? See that? All right, we're ready to go. Now what I need to do is create a quick listener. Go to DEF CON. Now what this is going to do is we're going to do a social engineering gaze, but you, this is anything from a post-exploitation standpoint, right? So we're going to hack a company, and you're actually going to see that live here in a minute. Um, we're going to hack a company. It's going to come back to us, and what's going to happen is we're going to shoot Meterpreter um, in memory in an AES-256 encrypted bubble. We're going to wrap that around SSH, and then we're going to create a polymorphic tunnel over HTTP. Okay? Sound pretty cool? RFC compliant HTTP. So right now it's waiting. We launched the website, and this is just the Java Apple attack that's built in set. So we go ahead and hit run. By the way, um, Please don't report that I have a valid certificate that's verified a publisher. I forgot about that. <laughs> so we should see here in a second, we get a response back. If everything went properly. There it goes. Notice encrypted the tunnel identified, sending challenge to verify, making sure it's the right session. What it's going to do is it's going to um, create an SSH, SSH tunnel over TDP for us. It's going to then send the interpreter shell via second stage over our local host over to the victim machine, and then we have a full shell running through the network over native HTTP. Yeah. Let's pop the box. Now notice here we're tunneling over local host. So it's actually running through our local host environments over SSH, over HTTP, and then what, what it does is it actually chunks it up every single time it does any type of get or post request. So it's a little slow. Um, but it actually chunks it up different every time and changes the behavior and patterns every single time. Um, so every single packet that you send is going to be completely different over HTTP. All right? Forget I'd stop it. Nick? I think I'm up now. Yep, good, good. So 
uh, types of next gens. So welcome to the era of Marty McFly. Uh, simply put, we're dealing with static. We still have the same slide, right? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, we, we're static sig signatures anomaly detection. So basically, hello antivirus on a different level. Yeah, and if you look at this, what we started doing an analysis on a lot of the next gen firewalls is their behavioral analysis um, really dealt with a lot of signature based um, detection with some minor modifications or changes um, based on uh, what, the what type of payload. Like, for example, um, you know, a lot of the next gen firewalls will flag on a second stage interpreter, uh, but if you change that modify in any way, shape, or form, just a little tiny bit, um, it allows you to get around it and still exfiltrate out over those protocols, whether it's HTTP or anything else. Um, so basically, it's just static based signature again. Um, and we're basically going back to the mid 80s, um, early 90s, uh, just on the network behavioral side of the house. Okay. Um, one of the next gen firewall claims is stop APT. It's obviously ridiculous. Um, move to the perimeter. So to me, this is kind of crazy. All right. So security, we started like really doing a little bit of a decent job when we started having firewalls, DMZs, network segmentation, things like that, and we actually had layers of defense, right? Instead, we're like moving to the cloud and mobile devices and laptops and just everything is completely decentralized and no longer at the perimeter. Um, so it's all the way out and out and about. And so that actually creates a, a pretty large exposure for us and something that these things aren't going to even come close to touching. Now, next demo. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, we ran into a customer recently where um, they were basically, they, and I don't know how you manage this, but basically they were doing whitelisting of only um, websites that they actually le uh, legitimately allowed. And so a lot of them still use social media as an allowed um, exceptions, but regardless, this is just anything that you can um, uh, use that allows you to uh, put information to something that's whitelisted. Now, what we're going to be releasing is a new tool that allows a framework for that, um, that allows you to just basically insert a, a website that may be whitelisted, that's public, um, that's used all the time, and then you can use it as an intermediary uh, for encrypted protocol traffic over HTTP um, as, a, as a, a thing in the middle. So, what we're going to do here is just to show you an example. That's not an example. We're going to run this listener. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to launch a payload on my Windows machine. Windows machine is going to connect out to Facebook with things that I've already predefined and it's going to allow a direct um, intermediary over HTTP encrypted traffic uh, to allow us to uh, do more of a command and control all through Facebook. Again, it's not just, it's not a Facebook issue. It's just anything that you have any type of public access to. So it's going to inject into there. We get our shell. Now, it's really quick, it's fast, um, because we're continuously monitoring any major, major modifications based off of the notification system, which is nice. Now, as soon as I type in something like ipconfig, it takes a second because I have to post it, then read it back in, execute the command, post it back up with the data, so it's a little bit of a lag. Usually takes about four seconds, but I give it eight just in case, especially for demo purposes. And then we're able to use Facebook as essentially a man in the middle to communicate. And it could be any website. Um, any website that you have the ability uh, to put any type of information off. <laughs> and that's the new one we'll really re be releasing for a framework. All right, so the next one's my favorite. This is the best demo. Um, this is the kind of the, the pinnacle, okay? So we're going to go through a bunch of different technologies, everything that we use for comp corporations, and then from there we're going to kind of expand on it and uh, see what we can actually do, okay? So behavior analysis. Um, the best, uh, I'd say, uh, we can liken this to the FBI and their behavioral analysis unit. They base their profiles on behavior, and that's exactly what behavior analysis does. But the problem is, is people can change their behavior, and so can the attacks the malware, <laughs> um, everything that uh, the attack is actually based on can be changed. So we estimate about 30 seconds for this to be bypassed and we're going to demo how that's going to be done. Application whitelisting, 
Um, really a pain in the butt to manage, especially in large corporations, but a lot of companies are moving towards that because you get to more of a trusted model where you only allow whitelisted applications. Um, that's all fine and dandy, but all the whitelisted applications you use, we use as an exploit play field, so it doesn't really do much good. So we're going to use that as well, okay? Antivirus, we really don't really need a slide on that, but I just put, kind of put it in there. Um, Filler. Just like do anything and it's good. So here we go. Um, monitoring and detection could be a good concept, right? Because we wanted to detect these attacks. Most companies outsource them to MSSBs, right? Who have no idea what their network is, anything about their data, and they're looking for port scans. Sounds good. That's our monitoring detection. The content filtering works awesome. No, it does not. It does not work at all. Because why? We can change the content. Exactly. That's all I got to say about that. So is everybody ready for one of the most epic demos ever? <laughs> this is one of the most epic demos ever. <laughs> You don't hear that a lot in talks. <laughs> Bring out your chicken. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do here, and this could go horribly wrong or go horribly right, okay? I've actually got a customer who said that he would let us social engineer somebody on stage um, real time, and I can't think of anybody else better to do it than uh, one of my good friends, Kevin Mitnick, up here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give Sam a call just to make sure that he's still good and hasn't chickened out yet. <laughs> so we give Sam a call, make sure he's all good with it, and then as soon as we're good with it, we're actually we got five numbers. So this could go horribly wrong where we don't get anybody, all right? Or and go horribly right and be fucking awesome. So either way, we'll figure it out. So hopefully you don't see this right now, so that's fine. Let's see what you're seeing on the screen right now. Just blank? Okay, cool. I don't want to give the phone numbers out. Because you guys are crazy sons of bitches. <laughs> Not going to lie. <laughs> so give us one second here to set this up. You ready? All right. Mirror display. Yes, I have live shell windows up. All right. Let's give them a call. Oh. So can everybody see the screen with the shells up? Yep. Good. All right, let's do this. <laughs> that sounded like it hurt. <laughs> See, Paul, that's how you roll a t shirt. You got to put a rock inside of it. The Browns are recruiting. We still have them. <coughs> Hello, this is Sam. Hey, Sam, it's Dave. Kenny, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. Hey, I just wanted to verify that we're still good to um, do our little thing that we agreed upon. You're actually talking in front of um, everybody at DEF CON right now. Are you cool with that? Oh, yeah. That, that's perfect. All right, listen. We're going to try to keep the company in mind as much as possible. Um, I'm going to expect the audience to be very tame and not start tweeting about the company unless, uh, in fact, if they um, accidentally say their name on the phone or something like that. Is that okay? Is that good with everybody? That, that's perfect. All right. 
All right, just a couple questions real quick. And, and again, we're not going to use any of this for our attack. We just want to see what type of technologies you have in place, okay? So first of all, um, are you using some sort of next-gen firewall that's one of the top providers out there? Yes, sir. All right. Um, are you using any type of whitelisting technology? Yes, we are. Do you do egress filtering? Yes. All right. And then um, as far as anything else, um, do you have any type of like virtualization sandboxing technology at your SMTP gateways? Absolutely we do. All right. Thanks, Sam. I'll give you a call back after this is done. All right. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. I'll report it. Thank you. Thanks, man. Bye. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> we got three more to go, so bear with us, all right? Let's try it. We're going to keep trying through until we get it. Dance, chicken, dance. What are we paying you for? Yes, may I speak to uh, James, please? Hello? Hello? Yeah, James. Hello, Hello James. Hello. James, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great, great. This is Tom Bodet over with the HR department, specifically benefits. How, how's it going today? Hello? Talking to okay. I'm sorry. We're, I'm having issues with my phone. Uh, is this James? Yes. Oh, great, great, great. This is uh, Tom Bodet. I'm over with uh, HR. With the, uh, I work specifically in benefits, and uh, I sent you a. We sent you over a form about a week ago 
on on our be benefits privacy form. Did you actually receive it? Uh, I don't remember seeing it. You don't. Well, unfortunately, I'm calling several people. You're you're the eighth person I'm talking to today. We must have had an issue getting them out. And we have to send you this form because legal is requiring that you accept a new policy. It's part of a legal requirement to continue receiving benefits. So it's kind of important, and we, we need to get this done today. It's Friday. And um, do, you have, do you have a moment? Do you, ha do you have a fax machine, or do you have a, or do you have a computer handy? Or, or better yet, do you, are you near your PC? Uh, I'm at my computer. You have a, can you, uh, do you have a moment? Sure. Okay, okay, great. Uh, if, you could, uh, if you could open up a browser, like do you have a, use Internet Explorer or Firefox? Yeah, uh, we have uh, Internet Explorer. Okay, if you can go ahead and open it up for me. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to have you accept the, the new policy uh, over your computer so you don't have to go ahead and fax it to us. It makes it easier and quick so uh, you don't have to fill out a form. Sounds good. Okay, tell me when you're ready. Are you ready? Okay, if you can go to www. Dot yeah. Health, H E A L T H, Health, Benefits, and this is all one word, no spaces, portal.com. So that's www.healthbenefitsportal.com. And tell me when you get there. Benefit Correct. And you should, when you get there, you should like see a pop up. When, you, when, the, when the site loads, you should see a pop up come up. Yeah. Repeat that? I saw a pop up, I just click OK. Yeah, click OK, that's right. Okay, now go ahead. Okay. Now, now, since you clicked OK on the pop up, um, we went ahead and uh, just automatically accepted the, the policy. So if you receive that, if you find that email or you find that in spam that we sent you earlier, just go ahead and ignore it because everything is fine. Oh, that's it? Well, unfortunately, I have to call six more people that uh, didn't fill out the form either. So, um, you know, it's kind of my Friday work. All right. All right. Well, um, have a great weekend and, uh, and uh, talk to you soon. All right. Uh, All right. Take care. Bye bye. Good work. All right. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, my nerves are like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just stop there? <laughs> yeah. Well, so you might be wondering why I got multiple shells. Now, the way that this attack works um, is um, I love that Windows is end of lifing XP. Like that is the best thing that could have ever happened to us since like ever. Because with Windows Vista and above we get a thing called PowerShell, right? <laughs> and PowerShell is whitelisted, right? So what we can do with PowerShell is Matthew Graber came out with an awesome attack a while back um, that allows you to basically inject a shell code straight into memory, all right, through PowerShell natively. Now I did a talk a, talk a couple years back uh, with an individual named Josh Kelly and myself uh, where we presented on how to um, basically take your, your malicious code, um, cast it Unicode, uh, um, Base64 encoded, and then you can get around execution restriction policies. So we don't have to worry about execution restriction policies. Well, that's still the same, same the case. So in Windows 7, Windows 8, et cetera, et cetera, we have the ability to directly access memory without ever touching disk on a whitelisted process. Sounds pretty awesome, right? 
So I recently released um, what's called a, a native x86 downgrade attack uh, through PowerShell which allows you to natively, so if you're on a 64 bit platform or an x86 platform it doesn't matter, it will automatically downgrade the process to an x86 um, process to allow you to inject native um, 32 bit shell code into memory uh, to actually execute. So basically we have you know full execution on all systems uh, through PowerShell no matter what um, and as you saw here, <laughs> whew, again, um, we were able to uh, basically circumvent a lot of the different types of technologies out there. Um, and this one was special, uh, special custom shell code that uh, basically encrypts um, the first stage, puts it back and then you use the Shikata um, set stage encoding to true uh, to do the second stage um, that's polymorphic. So it worked out well. And by the way, it's all default and set right now. So you can use this right now and set. So the truth is, you know, since hacking is a people problem, it's people coming up with new ways to get into organizations. It's people that are sitting there attacking our infrastructure. It's people that are continuously trying to attack us. It cannot be solved so, uh, solely by the use of technology. That, that's not going to fix the security issue. You know, technology itself isn't going to fix the problems that we face. Okay? And so. And defense in depth, air quotes, taken way out of context. It doesn't mean using multiple technology layers. It means using multiple layers in general. This is why these things do not work. They're not implemented correctly. Why? The main reason why we have the problems today is we're lazy. Anybody agree with that? Yeah. We are lazy bastards, seriously. I mean, we expect that we don't have enough staffing, we don't have enough funding, we don't have enough of this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to buy a piece of technology, right? We're going to implement it. We don't have enough people and resources to support any of the other technology that we have, so those go to waste and then we focus our six months to a year roadmap cycle of implementing this into our company while the rest of it goes to crap and then we implement something else and then we continue to do something else again we buy more and more. So what I'm going to introduce to you is, is, is revolutionary, I know. It's a 12 step program. <laughs> I came up with this, okay? So this is a 12 step program of actually fixing security and, not, and it's not going to cost you a penny, all right? I'm a big advocate of being able to do things that don't cost you a ton of money that you really can fix. So the first thing is get your hands dirty. We actually have to talk to people. And trust me, I know. Um, we actually have to talk to people and interact with them and figure out our business and how they actually make money and how we actually have assets and how do we protect those assets. That's important, right? But that requires us to actually do some work ahead of time. Step two, and now is Bill and Ted in the 80s or 90s? I might screw that up. Ooh. Early 90s. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we're good with that. So getting back to the 90s, all right, I remember sitting there and hearing, hey, here's how you build a firewall, here's how you do egress filtering, here's how you do network segmentation. Like all of those core critical concepts that we don't do today on our flat networks and our flat infrastructure make it so much easier for me as an attacker that once I compromise one machine, I'm into the rest of them. So isolating people to only access that they need, data that they need, systems that they need, segmenting accounting and finance and everybody else away from each other so that they only have access to the certain systems. Those are concepts that we built in the 90s. I know, again, revolutionary. I'm, I'm, I'm a hair to talk here. I mean, no, I'm, and, I'm serious. And, and this, this works. A recent engagement, fairly small, we, what we just did would not work. They didn't have anything revolutionary. They were just using exactly what Dave just said, proper follow rule sets, segmented networks. We could not perform this. We had a custom executable that we actually had used the week before at a large organization. I think it, the fish we it was about like a thousand shells or something like that. It was when it just kept popping up. It was sort of like really cool to watch, but it's completely true in the real world. Now, education awareness. Um, interesting concept. I got I to know new, revolutionary. We haven't been talking about this a lot. Um, education awareness, really trying to touch our people whoa, whoa, because. Whoa, whoa. Uh, Bruce Schneider, I thought with that. Never mind, never mind. We're not going to go into that right now. Um, Bruce Schneider. Anyways, so. Education awareness is a concept to really focus on people, you know, they're making, actually making sure that they understand key concepts, right? We all know that. Um, making security your friend. You know, they want hu people want hugs. There's no question about it, except for Andrew from Multigo. He only gives me one on his birthday every year, but other than that, he wants hugs. Um, but making friends with security, making sure that we're more of an inhibitor of the business versus something else. Step five is my favorite, the one year challenge. Don't buy a damn thing for an entire year. Not a whole thing, not one thing for a year. Just stay away from something and focus one on what you already have and start focusing on that, that defensive strategy around security because at the end of the day that's what's going to make it or break it for your company. This is my thing in security right here. If it introduces complexity, it doesn't need to be in your environment. 
if it's simple for you to understand, then you should put it in your environment. Like something that's going to take you four years to implement, dude, really? Seriously? That's where we're at right now? You need to focus on the basics, getting back to the easy things because that's ultimately what's going to stop us. Penetration testing, okay, I'm a little bit biased here, but understanding where your risks and, and identifying your risks and simulating that um, and getting people that can actually help you out on that side. Um, step, was this step nine? Eight, okay. Take a one week hiatus. Go get your chi, grab a beer, sit for a week and actually think about what you're actually going to do and how you're going to do it because we come into this thing where we're firefighting every single day. And so we don't do anything. We sit there and we firefight, firefight, and firefight. Just take a week back, crack, crack open a beer. I know this is an AE meeting, but it's okay. Um, crack open a beer and you'll be fine. One book that I have to thank Chris Nickerson for that actually changed my life um, is called Rework. Read this book. It's one of the most fantastic books, and you've applied it to security, it actually really works. It's the guys from 37 Signals that wrote it. It was actually amazing. Step 10, I already talked about this a little bit, but removing complexity from your environment and going back to the basics. Step 11, actually just do it. Don't like pontificate and talk about doing it. Actually go and do it. Change it. And lastly, just rinse and repeat. Do the same thing over and over again, you'll be fine. And thanks everybody for your talk. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.